Hey, I want to wish every father a happy, happy Father's Day. Lord, I want to just thank you for this day. Lord, just go with me, Lord. Just give me strength. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I just, just want to just y'all just remember Pastor Bill and his family. You know, wherever they're at, just, he's not here today. I'm filling in right now. Lord, I just want to thank you. <coughs> Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. I'm lost for words. I'm lost. In words. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We just want to thank you for this day. And we're going to have uh, Brother Tom Tabor going to speak for us this morning. Can you, Jay, if you want to open service here on the, on the so far?
just want to worship God today. I tell you, he is just an awesome, awesome God. And he is so faithful. And he is just so faithful. And I remember uh, Leoma telling me one time that she had a vision of some barrels of glory and that she saw God just pouring those barrels out. And so we just want to usher in that glory this morning. We just want to usher that in for him this morning because he is so good. Let's just worship him today. Let's give them a hand here. Let's give them a hand. I just want to welcome Facebook here today. Let's give the Facebook a big hand. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We don't pass around the offering plate anymore. We're going to, anytime you want to tithe and offer, just anytime during the service, just come on out up here and just anytime. Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Sheila, you want to? 
This is my tithe and offering. It will do what right, God says it will do. Raise your right hand. I forgot to say that. Yeah. The windows of heaven are open over me and my house, and such blessings have been released. I don't have adequate room to contain them all. I am the seed of Abraham. The oath of God swore to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithe and offerings to the fertile soil of the church of his presence. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to change the service, and we're going to turn it over to Brother Tom Tabor. Everyone give, give him a hand. Amen. I appreciate y'all, your praise and worship. I appreciate y'all doing that, and I appreciate everyone that's here today. And I want to tell you something before I get started. You know, uh, we were, I, it humbles me to be here in, in the pulpit uh, at uh, the bequest of uh, Pastor Chapman. And it, and it humbles me to do that. And, and it humbles me to be here on Father's Day to preach to you. And we was had an unexpected phone call from Alabama, my sister, which I had told you about, and we had took a scent of prayer cloth to her for the when they had the cancer healing and Easter, and she took a turn for the worst, and we drove down to Alabama yesterday, and we come back late last night, and I, I appreciate the prayers that y'all have prayed and the pastor has prayed, and. She needs a miracle, and that miracle I know can come from here because I know that we have prayed from the east to the west to the north to the south that the coronavirus will be bound, and from what I understand from Pastor Chapman, nobody in his church got it except one, and it was spoke on him from what I was understanding or from what he told me. And I'm going to tell you something. Everybody can sit there and say that all oh, we can trust science. It's God that's turned that stuff back. It's not. It's not. It's not science. And the people who say that science is taking care of it, the people who's taking the vaccine is still getting it. So it's not science. So you got to. You got to understand the main father here on Father's Day is the one that's rebuking the disease. He's the one who's taking care of it. We need to get refocused to that. Would everybody stand for it? Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you just be with us today in this service and you be with the pastor and his family because we know that they have a special time and we ask that you just bless them and keep them on their trip and wherever they're at. Lord, you just touch them. Lord, I ask that you guide my mouth and my spirit and my mind and what I say today, that I can reach out and touch somebody here in the, in the church or anywhere in the Internet that they'll see and they'll recognize that they got to believe upon your Son, Jesus Christ, to be saved and for salvation. And that, Lord, that we know that you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and you are the God Almighty, and there's none like you anywhere on the, anywhere. And we know that you have made us, you have put our heartbeat in our chest, you're making our processes work, our being is because of you. It's no, it's no reason for any reason else. And we praise your holy name for you sending your Son to give us redemption from our sins, Father God. We thank you for you just letting him come and to save us all, that we can be with you in an eternity. And we know that you are God. We know that you are the Lord Almighty. And we know Jesus, your son, come to shed his blood to save us all. And we, we freely admit that he is, he is our redeemer. Father God, we ask that you just move upon people who need your movement right now. We ask that we, we speak to any diseases and coronavirus and cancer. We speak it that it would be rebuked in the name of Jesus. We ask for your blessings upon the people 
and that we, our nation, turn back the way it used to be, Father God, that we feared you, and I pray for each one of those leaders, Father God, that they will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, that they will see the error of their ways, and that they will revert back to you, Lord. Thank you for just doing what you have done. When we praise your holy name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. The reason that I'm bringing up this trip to Alabama, it was really distressing. And, and, and I'm just telling you, it humbled me a lot that I'm going down there. And, you know, this, this is my younger sister. And she's got stage four bone cancer. Her blood is quit making in her body, and only God can change that. There's no pill, there's no infusion, there's no drugs, there's no doctor that can make the body change like God can. God made us, God can fix us. Now, you're going to say, well, what does that have to do with church today and Father's Day? Well, our Father can make that change. He can speak it into existence. He can speak things that will change things to happen in the come. And, and, and you're going to say, well, what, 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 what are we going to say about that? If you go back to Genesis, the first chapter, and a lot of people screamed about this when the guy was were on the moon and or were going around the moon, and they read this in space. You know, somebody that don't believe in God wanted to raise sand, and of course we have to become politically correct. But now it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formed without and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of waters. And God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. And God said, saw the light, and it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. I'm going to stop right there. Some years ago, or actually, what, two or three years ago, I think it was 2008, and whenever the eclipse happened, I took Karen and our grandkids. We went to mid-Tennessee, or almost mid-Tennessee, or going toward mid-Tennessee, and we went to watch that eclipse. And that is God putting on his own light show. And if you don't understand that our Father, who made the heaven and the earth and the light, he has done stuff that people want to explain that it would just happen. It was a big bind. But he precisely lines up everything every year for an eclipse like that, to show him that he is, you know, the stars and the moon, or the sun, which is a star, and the moon and the earth is his creation. And he's showing us there's more there that it just don't happen. And it happens, he ha makes it happen because he has de designed the geometry of the universe. It, it works the way he wants it to work. And we were sitting down there, and we was looking, and here it is in the summertime, and it was hot. I mean, it was so hot. We had to, we had drinks. They were selling cold drinks, a, a buck a, a, a shot or for water, and two bucks for a pop if you was going to get it. And we was down there, and I had a cooler of stuff because I knew it was hot. And, I mean, it was so hot you just couldn't stand it. And then we started saying that you, you could buy your eclipse glasses so you don't go blind looking at the sun. And I was watching that, and you could see that moon going across the sun. You could see the part, portions and parts of it. Who else could design something like that? You know, and if you think about it, just forget about the eclipse. The earth tilts back and forth on its axis as it rotates around the sun to give us the different seasons. Who could think of something like that? And who can make it work? It's not because it's the natural course of things. It's not because there was a big bang and everything just assembled itself. It's, it was a master's hand that was on it. 
The master's hand is not what lined up the planets. The master's hand is what's doing what it does. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. You can go to the ocean and stand there and watch the, the, the waves come in. And, you know, Christian was talking to me when we was in there, and he said, the ocean's way out there. And I said, yeah, but watch it come in here. When the tide comes in, and the tide's coming in because that moon's going around the earth and moving the tides. And guess what? The master is one control that. But now, nobody else realizes that. They think it's natural. It's politically correct. Big bang. It blowed up and every, everything got in place. Trust science. Science knows how it did. Science can't explain how all these things come together to line up their self in precision. Enough that if we're a few degrees off to the right, we burn up. If we're a few degrees to the left, we freeze to death. How can that be a perfect balance to keep us alive on this planet? And they keep talking about climate change. We can't control climate no more than the man in the moon who don't exist. And guess what? If you read the book, this book right here, at the end it says what happens to the climate. It says what happens to the heavens and the earth. It talks about the new kingdom coming down. And if nobody wants to talk about that, it's because to them it's not politically correct because it's messing with what they're saying happens even though they can't dispute this. The prophecy of what's going to happen is right here. The prophecy of what's happened in the, the times to come is right here. They don't want to. They want to talk about climate change, but they don't want to crack this book open to see what it says about climate change. It's something they don't want to see. The end. The end of things to be. And when when you look at it, that God's the judge on the throne, looking at each ever every, each ever individual from the white, white throne judgment. They don't want to talk about that because they fear. Their hearts fail them because of fear. Because they don't want to read this. We got to revert back to we got to revert back to this. Now, the my, the father has gave us an instruction book here on Father's Day. He's got this book right here. And you want to talk about climate change? Look at the end. It tells you what happens to the climate. Okay? Now, we go from an eclipse that we watch, and we watch it. It's just beautiful the way it, it happened. We stand there, and it's so hot, and I was telling you that story, and it got cold. It cooled down. You could feel the temperature change when that moon crossed over across the sun, and then... You heard the crickets turn off. The animals started acting squirrely. And guess what? It got dark, and you could see that ring around the moon of the sun trying to get around it. And we were standing there, and everybody was ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And it was an ooh, ah moment. But guess what? That was God showing us he's in control. He still in control. He's still taking care of what's going on. Now, you know, and, and when he created the heavens and the earth and he laid it out, and he, you know, Adam was here, and he knows Adam messed up, and Eve messed up, and you know the whole story, okay? And then things transpired, and then he brought forth his nation, and I'm talking about Abraham come forth. And Abraham was, was as, as the father of all the nations, if you want to look at the source of everything. And he relied upon God because God was telling him what to do and how to do and what he should do. And God was blessing him and said he would bless him. But as Abraham died off and then went on and Israel become enslaved, 
with Egypt. God delivered them. You know, the most powerful kingdom on the planet, Egypt at the time, was put down by a set of slaves that they owned. And God cursed that country. God cursed the country. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that father, the, our father, he's cursed that country, and to this day, Egypt is still just a sandy, hot spot. It's not blessed. It's not blessed like Israel. And he removed them out, and he, he gave them transportation, and he delivered them, and then he gave them the Ten Commandments through Moses. He told them what to do. He told them what to do. And the reason I'm going through that is, is that he gave us an instruction in the Ten Commandments. He gave us instruction through this book. And we need to learn to live by it. If we don't learn to live by it, we're going to die. We're going to die. And now the reason, the reason I want to go from there, you jump up, it goes through the Old Testament, and then we get up to Jesus' birth. He had laid out everything about prophecy for his son coming to deliver us from the sin in the Old Testament so it would be fulfilled in the New Testament. And the reason I'm telling you what I'm telling you is that just like laying out the planets and laying out the sun and laying out the moon and laying out the tides and laying out the till of the earth so we have seasons, he laid this book out. And that book and the prophecy of his son has started at the beginning. It goes to the end. And he sent Jesus to deliver us because he knew that the devil was still making claim to us even because of Adam's sin and Eve's sin. He's known what he was doing. He knew all this was going to happen before it happened. He laid out the book, the instruction manual for us to follow and the universe. He laid it all out so we would pay attention that we know that he is God and he is Father. And I'm, I'm telling you at this point in time, we get to realize what he is trying to tell us ever and each day. We can't get lost in, you know, the everyday struggles of life. And forget the main purpose. I'm humbled today that I'm sitting here telling you this today because at some time in the way past, he said, well, that little boy's going to tell these people what's going on in that church on this day. And he has everything designed for a purpose. There's a purpose in everything that he does. And I am telling you right now, we got to get back into what he's telling us to do. You know, the pastor is talking about going and raising the tent, and he don't connect it to the church, and he's doing that. We need to go tell those people that they're lost and they're dying and they're going to hell. Yes, people are dying and going to hell. We can say that to each other. If they don't change at the ultimate end, they're going to be judged and they're going to go to hell. And each one of us need to examine ourselves and then preach to each other. And I'm talking about preach to each other. We need to do better. My wife does it all the time. She preaches to me all the time. And I'm telling you that we need to do better. Now, you're going to say, what does this have to do with Father's Day? has a lot to do with Father's Day. Because if we're doing our Father's bidding and preaching to the sick and the lost and all those kind of people, we would be putting people in these chairs. And it ain't a numbers game. It's his numbers game. I don't, I don't care if you had 100,000 people in here and I was preaching to them. If you get one, that's better than none. If you get one, it's better than none. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. People have lost sight of what going to church is. We go to communicate and praise God 
That's what we're here for. We're here to praise God because he is the master of the universe. He is the father who arranged everything that needs to be in the right sink. And he's also told us to go out and teach and preach to the world about his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus has told us to do that. He said that you need to go out and you need to preach to the world. And the pastor's doing it. He's taking a tent and he's going to go preach to the world. Now you can preach to the world in a tent down on the side of the road in Alabama or in Florida or in New Jersey if you want to go north. You also can preach right out here on the sidewalk. You can also preach to the people that's next to you at work. You can preach to the people that you walk into at the grocery store. You can lay hands people on, on, on people in the hands at the grocery store. We need to be prepared to go out of the norm because I'm telling you in our lifetimes, I think in our lifetimes, you're going to see that eastern sky split open and he's coming back. Now, I, I, I hate to tell the people that's politically correct, but guess what? He's coming back, and there ain't going to be nothing to stop it. There ain't going to be no climate change. There ain't going to be no red alert. I don't care what they, they're, they're, they're going to say. If that horn blows down, my hair's going to stand up on the back of my neck, too. I'm going to be scared, too, because I'm wanting to be on the train going up. I don't want to, I, I, I don't care to look back and see them clothes falling down off of me and I'm gone. It ain't going to bother me a bit. We got to be right to do that. We got to be right in our heart. We got to be right in what we preach and what we teach and what we believe. And yet we're all human. We all make mistakes, but we got to strive to do what he says to do. And if we're not striving to do what he tells us to do, we're not giving it our best effort. We're not. I believe like the pastor believes. I believe that we can lay hands on the sick. They walk out of here healed. I believe we can cast out demons. We can rebuke demons. I believe we can rebuke all the evils of this world. But guess what? We're getting to be a shrinking minority because nobody believes that no more because you've got to do what everybody else says to do. You know, the, the Lord speaks, and I was reading it, and I was going to preach this, but God told me to stay away from it. It says in the end times that kingdom will rise against kingdom. Nation against nation. Now, I'm going to tell you people that's watching on Facebook, and I'm going to tell the people here, the nation against nation it's the different races. It's not the United States against Russia and Russia against the Chinese and the Chinese against Israel and Israel against Jordan. It is the different races. And if you watch, the devil has pitched just because you're a, a, a race of a different color, you're being discriminated against. And he's preaching that to try to put the people in a position that there is conflict at all times going on. And I don't care what you say, if you're yellow, green, black, red, white, blue, I don't care what color you are, the devil is feeding you a line stating that there is a superiority thing and there is no superiority thing because God our Father has preached that through Jesus in Matthew Nation rises against nation. It's kingdom versus kingdom might be Russia versus United States and United States versus China. Nation versus nation interpreted in the Bible is each race group. Yes, God made different races and God's the father of all of them. That's why he said nation against nation. And I'm telling you, that is prophecy in Matthew of today. The pitching against each nation, that's the pure devil. And I don't care what they say about it. They can sit there and look at it. That is the devil trying to follow the biblical prophecy of nation versus nation. Now, don't tell me our Father God 
Jesus' father don't know what he's doing. He knows. He has taught us that. He has showed us that. Now to go back to the pastor and him, for him going out and racing, it, it's going to take an ama amazing amount of effort and an amazing amount of anointing and an amazing amount of prayer. We don't spend time, you'll get eat by them devils that's out there. The devil knows that too. And I'm going to tell you something. The more you spend time with him, the better off you are. And the better off you will understand what God's trying to do now. I think that if there's anybody that we need to talk to in this church today, that needs to be saved, you need to talk to them today. If there's anybody here that is looking for salvation or healing, we need to talk to today. We don't need to put it off the next week or the next following week. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Now, I understand that we preach to the people here, we preach to the people outside, we need to tell them, yeah, if you don't follow this book, you're going, you're going to pass away. Your spirit's going to go into a place, and in the end times, it's going to be judged. And if you're not right with the Lord, yeah, you're going to burn in hell. That's what the book says. Now, if you are trying, and you ask for Jesus in there, and you ask for salvation... And it, yeah, you're probably going to be standing up there in heaven. But there is a choice. Everybody wants to eliminate that other choice. If you decide that you're going to go to hell, and you're planning on going to hell, and that's what you're going to do, you'll probably wind up there. But it is just a real a place as heaven is. Both places exist. I don't care what anybody tells you, and the book tells you that. You can read it. There's stories about it. Jesus talks about it. It's stories about what's going to happen. And you've got to believe that there's people out there that don't even know the story of no one he's all. There's people that's never cracked this instruction booklet that was sent by our Father there's nobody who ever cracked this book. There's people that don't even know what the story of Noah and an ark is about. They don't know what Sodom and Gomorrah is about. I know, I've asked them. I said, you ever heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? They said, no. Have you ever heard the story of Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross? No. We die and our people die because of our ignorance. We're ignorant of this book. And, you know, there's two different things or two different sayings. If you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. And the, the, the definition of insanity, you keep doing the same thing over and over and never change. Guess what? We're trying to go back down that path again today. And I'm talking about this nation, the rest of the world. I pray that God intervenes now. He shows them I am God. I know he is. I don't have to have any fireworks or the eclipse or anything like that. I know he stopped the coronavirus. It wasn't no vaccine and it wasn't science. Now people will say, well, you're crazy. Well, I've been told that before. My wife tells me that every day. And I'm going to tell you this. I have found out if I trust him, I might be crazy, but I feel a lot better about myself. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to tell you this as a Father's Day's message, and, 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 and it's this. The more, the older I get, and yeah, I, I get kind of stupider the more, more older I get, but you get stupider as you get older because you think you know more. I'm going to tell you a story. The older I get, the more I think about it, the more I see it is true what's in this book. Amen. You know, and I, I don't feel too 
too neglected because I keep thinking I'm failing, I'm failing. Moses was just leading the people out of bondage about the time he's my age. So I don't feel too bad because he was still learning on the fly too. And if God is no respecter of persons, he won't treat me any different. He treated Moses, Elijah, Elisha. I think I can do the same things that they can do. And I think the pastor believes that he can too. And then he keeps thinking, well, I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to do that. You're not that old. You're only old when God says you are. And God don't think some people's old till they're a thousand years old. He might not even think it because what is it to a day to God? Is a thousand years? Is a thousand years is a day to Him? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. We don't think on His scale. Never have. Never will. And guess what? His thinking is not our thinking. And yes, we try to match wits with him. We try to match wits with him and fight and argue with him. And guess what? He just laughs at us and goes on. We are his kids. And he is the father. And I'm, I'm coming at you that you've got to understand that this book, everybody's wanting to pitch it out and wanting to go their own way every time they do. If you repeat in history, you do to repeat history. If you don't understand history, and if you don't read this book, all the faults of man that's here now is in this book. And guess what? The only reason that nobody wants to read it because it tells them the truth. The truth is, is that, you know, if you want to turn back, and, and I hope that I get to preach again pretty soon, you won't go through Revelations. I believe that you can turn CNN, NBC, uh, CBS, Fox News Network on their ear. Right there. You want to talk revelations? You want to talk climate change? Let's talk some climate change and revelation. Because they don't want to talk about that. You know, why would a man speak to a bunch of people about changing something now when he ain't going to be around Nowhere close in time to see it even happen. And you talk about the grandchildren and children. If God comes back, the grandchildren and children going to be with him. They ain't going to be here. So you start thinking about how man thinks that he's better than God. He's not. He's not because God will be existing when man's gone. He'll be here when man's gone. And he's told us that. He's, he's forever. And the words will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. One thing I wanted to bring up to you, and God showed this to me, and I didn't know how it lines up, and I still don't know how it lines up. I want you to turn to Luke. I think it's Luke 20. Luke 20. Yeah, Luke 20. And I, I thought this was funny. I don't know why he showed me this. And I've never heard nobody preach this out of the pulpit or maybe I was asleep when they preached it, okay? The question of David's son. And this is Luke 20, line 39. There was certain of the scribes answering and said, Master, thou hast well said. And he had just told them a bunch of stuff about being married and, and not being married in heaven and that we were equal to angels. That's what was taking place at that point in time. But that's not the part I'm wanting you to understand. Uh, verse 40. And after that, they durst not ask him any questions at all. They all sitting around and said, you did well what you said. And they didn't ask him any questions. So Jesus, perceiving what they were thinking, said this. And he said unto them, How say they that the Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, this is Jesus talking to him. They didn't ask him a question. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies my footstool. David therefore calleth him Lord. How is he then his son? 
And none of them could say anything after he said this. He, he whooped one out on them where they had been sitting there questioning him. He whooped out a question to them. And Jesus said that to them. And, and none of them said nothing back to him. They were all quiet. They didn't understand why he just all of a sudden off the cuff just brought this up. And then he said, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the high seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at the feast, which devour widows' houses and for a show make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. You know what he's telling them? He's telling them don't be a church. Don't practice and keep practicing the same thing you're doing, thinking it's going to make you bigger in God's eyes. He's telling them that you need to do what you're supposed to do and not make a show. And as my wife says, be real people. If you say something, you're going to preach to somebody, you're going to teach somebody something, you mean that you're doing it for that purpose. It's not because we're making a show to show our status in life or our position in the church. You know, I kind of like the idea of, of, of crying in the wilderness, out in the wilderness with uh, John the Baptist wearing camel hair and eating locusts. That's the way we need to get back to it. Doesn't matter about the fancy churches. Don't matter about the, the Lear jets. It don't matter about none of that. That, that don't matter. To me, God wants me to get around. He'll move me in the Spirit. I can be transported in the Spirit just like other people were because he's no respect for a person. So why would I need a Learjet to get around? Do you understand? So if we're going to be real people and we're going to preach real to people and try to save them, let's do that. Let's not try to make it look like we're on a different law. And I think our Father is telling us through Jesus, I want real people. I want real preachers and teachers and prophets and prophesiers. I want real people to stand up and do what they're supposed to do for me. Not the fakers. Not the pretenders. And I don't know why God showed me that, st that, that I, I think I have an idea of something that me and Cameron's talking about. And I think he pulled it out of the book right before we got down here. Because guess what? At 12 o'clock last night, I was driving back from Alabama. I wasn't reading this stuff. And I am telling you right now, he is talking to the real teachers and preachers and people that's supposed to be doing. Because that's, sal you know, he's harvesting his people. The people who's going to come to his side is going to come to his side. I believe the people that honestly want to be on the Lord's side is going to try to be on the Lord's side. And the people who really has another agenda and they don't believe in him, they got their own stuff in front of them. That's what he's talking about right here. That's why he was saying in Luke 20, and I'm telling you right now, God is looking for real singers, preachers, teachers. He's looking for real teachers and preachers to do what they're supposed to do. And I, I'm going to tell you, whether you're talking to one person or you're talking to 20,000 or we're sitting here in a little group talking to five, either the one or the 20,000 or the five is going to understand you're doing it for real. Do you understand that? And I think on this Father's Day, I'm just being, I'm humbled that I'm getting to preach this because it's come together better than I thought it was because I thought I was going to get up here and mess up. But he is asking you to do your stuff as a real person. And if the pastor is going to preach as a real person out of the, the, the tent, you know, we help him, we pray for him as real persons. And when I say that, we are not faking what we're doing. 
And I want to tell you this, the more legitimate, the more you believe, and more honest you are with yourself, I think that God will manifest His glory and His anointing on us. And I think that He pays respect to that. He does in everything you do. If you do it with all your might for Him, that you can do just like you do anything else, and He says that do that in your work. He's in that. That's God's in that. God's in that. Now, this Father's Day, y'all, you fathers, I'm glad that you all were fathers. And I know that it's Father's Day, and I hope that this message sinks in with you because I'm looking at the Father who designed everything, laid everything else, and we need to bless Him because it's Father's Day, and we, we need to bless Jesus for what He's done. And I'm just telling you, if there's anybody in here today, and the Father has told me this, if anybody needs salvation, you need to come forward here and we need to pray for you. Okay? If there's anybody sick, we need to pray for you. I understand with the pastor being gone and other people's on vacation, and I understand that. That don't bother me. I don't care if it's just one person. God told me a long time ago, if I preach, I preach like I'm preaching to 50,000 people or a million if there's just one in here. But it doesn't matter. That don't matter because that one could be somebody that changes the world. I'm telling you right now, in this place, I want you all to stand. Stand up. I'm going to ask you to do something for me. I want you to pray for my sister. We have prayed over many prayer calls, and, and, and I, I want you to pray for her. And if there's anybody sick in your family, I want you to pray for them. But I want you to join with me in agreement that God works on my sister. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for my sister, Sissy, and that you just reach out and touch her in her hospital bed in, in, in Alabama, Father God, that you just touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' mighty name, and you just speak it. And it is done in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for the, all the anointing and, and the stuff that has gone on here today in church. I appreciate you being with me and helping me, Father God, and giving me strength. I thank you for your anointing that's on this church right now, upon each and every one of the people, and on the prayer, the, the praise and worship leaders and the people who sung today, I praise your blessing upon them. I pray it upon the people that has been here today. I pray it on every person that's here at this point in time in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your power and your grace and your glory here. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness of our sins. And we humble ourselves because we know we are sinners. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleans us up. In the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to pass the service over to Brother Dean because he has an announcement he needs to do. And I appreciate y'all showing up on Father's Day. And I appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Let's give him a good hand there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, i got a little announcement here. Uh, first of all, Thursday night service is canceled. We won't have, we're going to have no Thursday night service. And second, we got a little something here for Father's Day, and uh, y'all just hang loose, and we'll we'll pass that out. And I want to thank everyone for showing up here today, and I just want to thank you. Just just keep praising Lord and Lord. It just pray, it, touch me, touch me, Father. Lord, y'all pray for me. Pray for me in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you all for being here. Thank you. Amen. Amen.